This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss and contributing partners National Investor Relations Institute and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm TK Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome you back. And we decided this week to take a look at doing a sort of Washington, D.C. regulatory update. So joining me as my guest, um, in fact, is one of my co-workers. Um, Clark Camper is the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs and Public Advocacy with the New York or the NYSE you're next. That's Clark, it. welcome. Great, thank you TK, glad to be here. And uh, Clark actually has his own uh, web show or monthly show um, that's called Wall Street in Washington and we'll touch on that in a second. But Clark, anybody that is having to stay on top of what is happening at in Washington or the SEC today must really have their hands full. Yeah, no, no, you, you said it, TK. It really is a very busy time. Uh, it's, you know, I like a challenge, so I, I consider that to be a good thing. But uh, it's interesting, the, the, what's unusual about Washington at this particular moment is that the focus is on raising the federal debt ceiling right now. So that's really the kind of, you know, the issue that's sucking all the air out of the room. Um, it doesn't mean, however, that there isn't a lot going on because there is behind the scenes. And so I and my team have been very, very active in a number of issues, particularly Dodd-Frank implementation proceeds at pace, again, despite the fact that most eyes are on the uh, debt ceiling discussions. Well, there's some things uh, for the benefit of our viewers that we want to focus on, but then maybe if we have time, we can get back to the sort of the more macro issues. But Great. Um, let me focus in on the board, since most of our viewers are uh, corporate board members. Let me focus on uh, some of the issues that, uh, f that happen in Washington that affect them in the boardroom. And specifically, uh, let me talk on the say on pay, which seems to be sort of popular these days. Yes. But last week on our show, we talked about the frivolous lawsuits that had been um, uh, uh, developed out of companies failing their say on pay non-binding vote. Mm -hmm. And clearly this comes under the category of unintended consequences of Dodd-Frank. Yes. I guess my question is, um, since these are s have the appearance to be so frivolous yeah. and so unintended, do you think anybody on the Hill has any idea that this is sort of one of the unintended consequences that have come out? Yeah, no, it's a great question, TK, and I have to say that I have not heard anybody on the Hill talk about this particular issue. I've heard about it in, in, in ways such as your show, but in Washington, this particular issue has not been talked about. I, I should say, stepping back, that when Dodd-Frank was passed and these provisions were under consideration, we, the NYSE, Euronext, and many other voices, were very active in opposing these provisions. We were, were, uh, were saying that this would be the logical outcome of these kinds of provisions. So it's not like these were entirely unforeseen. Um, but, uh, but that said, yeah, we are where we are, and I have to say that I do not believe anyone in Washington, at least at a senior decision-making level, is really paying attention to this particular issue. Well, I guess that when you think about all the things that are going on, this is sort of a, a micro issue, but yeah. I, I assume that the Washington way, though, is uh, squeaky wheel, you yeah. know, gets the grease, so isn't there an obligation that, I mean, not only here at the exchange, but also that the individual companies shouldn't, this is where we need to make sure that these issues are not sort yes. of swept under the rug. Yes, no, no, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, in Washington, there are so many things that are, uh, are on the plate at, a, at any given moment, and as I said, particularly at this moment when there's such focus, and I think right, rightful focus on increasing the federal debt ceiling, um, you really do, I like the analogy, you really do have to be the squeaky wheel to get the attention, particularly issues like this. They're obviously very substantive. They're not necessarily uh, going to hit the, the press in the way that a lot of other political issues will. So members naturally are not going to pay a lot of attention to corporate governance issues, for instance. That is why, as you say, it is incumbent upon 
uh, individual companies and uh, as well as us to be out there punching on these issues and making sure that they are indeed brought to the attention of, of our representative uh, members. Well, well let, me, uh, let me bring up another micro issue that might be micro in its form, but is probably nothing more emotional than this issue to our viewing audience, and that mm -hmm. is accountability of the proxy advisory uh, firms. Yes, this indeed. This is sort of indeed. review that has been promised by the SEC, and I know yes. they've asked for comments, and there's been a lot. Can you give any feel for where that might be on agenda? Because yeah. I know their plate is full, they're underfunded. Right. So where do we stand with yeah. that today? Yeah, here I, here I would be more, uh, at least a little more optimistic. Um, this issue has gotten some play. Certainly the SEC, as, as you say, TK, has, has agreed to look at the sort of proxy plumbing system. And I know that, that that analysis is indeed going on. Also, the Chamber of Commerce has been quite active on this particular issue and uh, just recently issued a report that identified uh, revisions or, or a reform of proxy plumbing as a priority. So there has been a fair amount of attention. I still would step back though to what I said earlier that I think on a macro level what we need to do is continue to crank up the volume so that there's the right amount of attention paid to this and flipping over to the SEC and what they promised to do in this area. Um, I have a lot of sympathy for Mary Shapiro and the, the other commissioners and staff at the SEC. They absolutely have a lot on their plate, an inordinate amount on their plate, just from implementing Dodd-Frank alone. They're trying to do their day job as well. Um, they're, uh, you know, some would say that they don't have the resources that they need to do all this. So in fairness, looking at it analytically, the SEC is going to have a hard time, I think, getting to this issue uh, quickly. But that said, again, I go back to your squeaky wheel analogy. Uh, the SEC, like every other uh, player in Washington, does indeed respond to a squeaky wheel. And that's where the real opportunity is for us, for our listed companies, to make, this, make sure that, uh, that policymakers are aware of this issue. And that indeed will, again, move it from a sort of mid-burner to, I think, a front-burner issue. Well, these issues are close enough because the ISS, obviously, who's the... 900 pound gorilla in this case of yeah. proxy advisory firms is involved in both cases. Right. Every one that has been sued with a frivolous lawsuit has um, actually had a negative vote by the ISS. Yes. And uh, in proxy plumbing, obviously, the world would like to see a little more accountability there. Yeah. So yeah. This, this is an issue that lumped together, somebody could, if everybody right. was responding, could raise raise the tide exactly. a little bit. And I do think as you're describing, there's going to be such a um, sort of evidence, a body of evidence that is developed uh, on these kinds of issues because you will have example after example of this kind of unintended consequence of Dodd-Frank. Um, and I do agree at some point the substance, sort of the weight of evidence will, uh, will cause policymakers to sit up and take notice. But again, I think going back to our bigger picture here, we're going to get there a lot more quickly if, if people raise their voices and help policymakers understand that this is a problem and we might as well solve it sooner rather than later. Now there is one thing that y you and I in our preparation didn't talk about, but um, the, the exchange has held some roundtables and sessions yes. in Washington. I know Scott Cutler was down. I believe he did one on tax. Yes, just a couple and, weeks ago. Yeah, yes. and we had invited some uh, listed companies to mm -hmm. come down and offer things. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I understand we may be doing more of this. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, developed this year an, an initiative that we're calling Issuer Roundtables, where we bring issuers to Washington to learn about and advocate on a particular topic for a day. At least that's been the format that we've used so far. So the event that you're talking about, TK, was a couple weeks ago. We focused on tax. We had about 25 listed companies join us in Washington for a day. And they were, they were almost all very senior level executives who joined us. And we spent a day meeting policymakers on the Hill and in the administration learning about tax and advocating on tax as well. Um, it was, I think, a very, by people who participated, it was an extremely substantive and, and frankly, eye-opening uh, experience because, again, you learn that as, uh, as a, a, a company 
uh, that may, may not be as familiar with the ways of Washington, you realize that just showing up and, and sharing your experience and knowledge, you actually can, can get a lot done. So, so we did that with regard to tax earlier in the year. We did a roundtable on, uh, on uh, capital formation, and then we did a separate roundtable on job creation as well. So we will continue those throughout the year. And again, we're always uh, evolving and fine tuning those, but it is part of our larger effort to be a voice for our listed companies in Washington. Two questions, first of all, or two, yes, questions of you. Where would somebody find your Wall Street in Washington if they were interested in viewing your monthly update on that? Right. And second of all, um, if somebody that is a listed company is interested in participating in the roundtables, is there some place that they can sort of reach out and say, Certainly. hey, I'm interested in, in doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So Wall Street in Washington, if you go to the NYSC homepage, so either nysc.com or nyx.com, uh, you will find me actually on the, on the homepage there, so you can click on the link. Um, and my contact information is there, but to answer your second question about the, uh, how to contact me to get or, or anyone on my team to get involved in our roundtable or other activities, probably the best is to send me an email, and that is ccamper at nyx.com. Just C-C-A-M-P-E-R at nyx.com, and we'll take it from there. Clark, we have about a minute and a half. Uh, see if you can summarize the macro issues in a, uh, in a minute and a half. <laughs> Well, I'll try to. I do think that, uh, again, the focus in Washington is rightfully on increasing the debt ceiling and also hopefully in trying to get some sort of a grand bargain in terms of a, a meaningful reduction in federal spending. There's another opportunity for listed companies to share their voices or to, to, to lend their voices because, again, there are a lot of the usual suspects in the room arguing, uh, politicians, uh, economists, and the like. What is missing oftentimes is a business voice, and there's a real meaningful opportunity for people to get involved there. I will say, too, there's one other area that I would encourage listed companies to focus on, and that is the derivatives regulations that are being implemented by the CFTC. And those regulations are mandated by Dodd-Frank. The uh, important piece is, particularly for listed companies, is if you use derivatives to hedge risk, then you will be very interested and will have a stake in what the, the CFTC is, is deciding about how you need to set aside margin and other activities related to using those derivatives. So everyone has a stake. Everyone, if you're not involved, either contact us or make sure that you get to your Washington people or somebody else who can get you connected with the CFTC. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. No one at the NYSE Year Next is closer to the Washington scene than Clark. And Clark, it's a pleasure to have you Thank join you, us. Thank you, TK. Happy to be here. That concludes this issue of This Week in the Boardroom. We hope you'll join us next week when we take on another topic that will help make you a better board member or committee member. And we'll see you then. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom. Brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext. Along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.